Good morning, everybody. We're getting ready to do our worship service. How good it is to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Let us make a joyful noise unto the Lord, for God is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Amen, amen, amen. We're going to have our scripture by Deacon uh, Williams, and then she's going to take us to the throne of grace. Good morning. I'll be reading Philippians 2, verses 5 through 11. This is the word of God. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and becoming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of God for the people of God. Could we join hands across the aisles? <laughs> so every hand and every heart can touch a miracle. That's why we join hands across the aisle. That the spirit of God will go from heart to heart and breast to breast. That's why we touch. Let us look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come to you today with thanksgiving in our hearts. We came to give you praise and honor and glory, God, for who you are, not just what you do for us. We thank you, God, for the breath that we breathe, the things we can see, taste, and touch. We thank you for being with us this morning as we woke up clothed in our right minds. We pray, dear Lord, that you would watch over this service. We thank you already for sending your Holy Ghost to join us here. Yes. We pray, Lord, that we will have a spirit-filled worship service, God, yes. Yes. and it will all be done to your glory. Yes. We thank you, God, for everyone who is here. We are praying, God, for those who are ill and cannot be here. We pray for those in the hospitals, in the prisons, God, that you would send your angels even there, God, so that they will feel your spirit. We pray, God, that we will do things that will cause people to wonder how we have the joy we have, yes. even when things are not going right, dear God. We thank you, God, for being with us even when we thought we were totally alone. We thank you for being with us during the night. God, we come with expectation that you will do great things in this service. We pray, Lord, that we will be a light unto others, God, that they may see you in us. Yes. Lord, we pray this time that as people are running around trying to buy gifts and spend money they really don't have, God, that we have the greatest gift that was free. Yes, yes. And God, remind us that we have a gift that costs nothing to give, and that is love. The love that you share with us, the love that we should share with others. We pray for our pastor that he will bring a word that yes. will change lives, God. Yes that he will bring a word that will cause someone to wonder what they must do to be saved. Let it fall on fertile ground, God, and let us water it. Let us use it. Let us not sit on the gifts that you have given us, God, yeah. that we has, as we enter into 2018, God, that we will be on fire, yeah. on fire yeah. for you, dear yeah. God, that we will do those things that you have called us to do. Yeah. I thank you for all that you are doing, God. I thank you for our pastor and first lady. I pray that you will continue to strengthen them. I pray that you will be glorified in every note that's sung, every note that's played, every word that's yes. uttered. Yes. We praise you. We glorify you. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Right in front of you, there should be a hymnal. And seeing how this is the Christmas season, we're going to open up this service with hymn number 93. This is probably my favorite Christmas song. Oh, come let us adore. Because this is a song that can be sung all year round. It's not just the Christmas song for this season. But every day we should adore the Father for the great things he has done. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, come all ye faithful. Hymn number 93. Let's all stand on our feet and sing this collectively as one big choir unto the Father. Oh, come. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to bless Come and behold. King of Angels. That's a worship moment right there. Who oh, come let us? Who oh, come let us?
Amen. 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 That's what we come for, to worship and adore him. That's why he reigns forever. Amen. Amen. He reigns forever. Amen. Thank you, choir. Thank you. Thank you. He reigns forever. Amen. Could you please take your seats? Amen. 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 Do we have any first-time visitors for the first time? Could you please stand up? All right, amen, 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 amen. Just stand on your feet. On behalf of Dr. Larry T. Walt Harrow, our senior pastor and First Lady Michelle, we welcome you to Shiloh. And we thank you for coming by this way as a time as this. So, far, so we just want to say, the ushers are putting something in your hands so you can fill out and just pass it around when we give our offering. So uh, we just thank you for coming. So Shiloh, let's just welcome our guests, give them the love of Jesus. Amen, amen. Thank you. 
our morning announcements that we focus on the screen. Good morning and welcome to the Shiloh News Network. These are your announcements. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Psalms 145 verse 3. Happy holidays to you and your family from Dr. Larry and Lady Michelle Walthour. May your holidays be filled with joy, peace, and goodwill that comes from knowing Christ our Lord. Show your support for our 2020 Mortgage Elimination Capital Campaign by sewing a special $20 gift above regular tithes and offerings on First Sundays. All 2020 mortgage contributions are tax deductible. Our final SALT meeting for 2017 will be tomorrow, promptly at 6 o'clock p.m. If you are unable to attend, please send a representative from your ministry. Let's close out the year strong. Bible study with Dr. Walthour will convene on tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. We will continue our study on kingdom principles. Questions and answers begin at 6.30, and all are invited to attend. Thank you to all who contributed to our first Shiloh community-wide dinner yesterday. <laughs> Despite the weather, those who came enjoyed food, fun, and fellowship. Taking our ministry beyond the walls is key part of our mission as Kingdom Mites. In 2018, Shiloh is preparing to launch its Arise mentoring project for young boys ARISE is an acronym for Accepting Responsibility, I Seek Excellence. This initiative will be aimed at helping save our young men from the pits, plots, and ploys of the street life and give them a viable alternative. We are seeking men to be mentors and volunteers for this ministry. The Compassion Ministry is in need of men's clothing, winter clothing, and winter blankets for the homeless. For more information, contact Sister Rochelle Orr. The 3 p.m. Women of Shiloh and Youth Ministry will be accepting donations of gloves, socks, hats, and toys for our annual Sonia's Angel Tree and Toys for Tots initiatives until Thursday, December the 21st. Gifts will be distributed after service on Christmas Eve in the Fellowship Hall. ID is required to pick up toys for Tots gifts. Registration is now being accepted for the 2018 National Men of Valor Conference that will be held on April the 13th and 14th at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. Registration is $50, which does not include hotel. Hotel arrangements are being made. For more information, visit the Welcome Center or the main office. All checks should be made payable to Shallow Baptist Church. Join Dr. Walthour for morning prayer each Wednesday at 6.30 a.m. To call in, dial 641-715-3274 and enter code 780094-POUND. In celebration of the Christmas holiday, the office will be closed Friday, December 22nd through Tuesday, December 26th. Please enjoy this time with family and friends. The audio video ministry and the Shiloh Welcome Center are looking for service volunteers. Experience is not necessary, but a teachable spirit and a joyful personality are a must. Training on all equipment will be provided. Please see Mr. Mike Nixon or Deacon Bishop for additional information. The transportation ministry is looking for drivers. Members who are interested in serving in this wonderful ministry are asked to see Deacon Nick Day for more details. Shallow broadcast on WRCT channel 16 each Sunday at 7.30 a.m., Tuesday at 5 o'clock p.m., and Friday at 1.30 p.m. You can watch on channel 16 or online at www.wrct.tv. Be sure to check your local listings to support our television ministry. Spread the word and tell a friend. Shallow is streaming on Facebook Live for our Sunday worship experience and Monday Bible study series. Live stream with us on our website at Facebook page and connect with Shallow by liking us on Facebook or following us on Twitter and Instagram. Send us your likes, comments, and shout outs. 
Order forms for Dr. Walthour's 2017 Christmas series, The X Factor, are available in the Welcome Center. See ministry staff to place an order. Dr. Walthour's weekly sermons are available for purchase in the Welcome Center, purchase CDs and DVDs, and Christian education material in the Welcome Center immediately following our 10 a.m. worship experience. You can financially support our multimedia ministry by sowing a seed and indicating the amount on your envelope. For ordering and purchase information, see the Welcome Center staff. Thank you for tuning in to the Shiloh News Network for your morning announcements. After a word from our pastor, children are dismissed to Children's Church in the Fellowship Hall. Shiloh, let us now stand and receive our senior pastor, Dr. Larry Walthour. Come on, put those hands together. Give the Lord a hand for his offering. Oh, come on, we could do better than that. Good morning, Shiloh. Good morning, Shiloh. Come on, let's give God some praise. He's worthy of the praise. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, our God is worthy to be praised. Do me a favor and look at your neighbor and tell him I came with my praise this morning. Tell him like you mean it. Say, tell him, tell him. Say, neighbor, I came and I came to give God some praise. Now, I need all the praisers in the house to give God a wonderful, thunderous roar of a praise. For when the praises go up, the blessings come down. To our Facebook audience, thank you for tuning in to the Shiloh Baptist Church. Shiloh, help us welcome Facebook all over the world wide web. We thank you for tuning in uh, here at Shiloh. We thank you so much for tuning in, and we bless God for you on this morning. You may be seated in his presence. Good morning again, Shiloh. We are just so grateful to God for truly God is doing great things in our lives. And we're going to ask the children at this time to be dismissed to go downstairs. Let's give God praise for our young people, for youth church. Amen. Thank God for the staff and uh, those who are working with them. We're asking them to please go to the, to the lower level at this time. And I want to publicly say to everybody happy holidays we pray that you've had a wonderful wonderful holiday season uh thus far uh just a couple of things we want to emphasize uh to the men you heard the announcement uh the 2018 national men of valor's conference is going to be at first baptist church of glen arden uh april the 13th and the 14th and i need your help somebody say your help, your help. amen we want all the brothers we want as many brothers as we can to uh, join us to go down to Glen Arden. We went down uh, two years ago, and for those brothers who went, it was a life-changing experience. Uh, it was about 3,000 men worshiping and praising and glorifying God, and I think we ought to just thank God for that. Amen. All of our men aren't in jail. Uh, we got some kingdom men that are excited about the Lord, and so we are encouraging our men. We definitely want to take a group down uh, that Friday, Saturday, uh, the itinerary is online. Uh, uh, you can go online on our website and, and get it, or you can go to the National Men of Valor Conference 2018, and the itinerary is there. Uh, and so we're asking for those who are registering, please register uh, at Shiloh, and Shiloh will in turn uh, uh, send a, a, a check on our behalf to Glen Arden. And so we want to get at least... Uh, 20 men. Somebody say that. Amen. Amen. We can, we can do that. Somebody say amen. We can do that. And so, brothers, we want to encourage you. Uh, and this, we're praying, would be a, a springboard to our men's retreat uh, for next year. Now, we haven't forgot about the women. Amen. We, we, we definitely want to make sure that our women uh, uh, and families are blessed uh, this year. But we definitely want to get uh, ahead of this. We don't want it to catch us uh, uh, later on during the year. So please put that in your calendar, brothers. April the 13th and the 14th, 2018, uh, First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. The Reverend Dr. John Jenkins is the senior pastor there. Uh, and we're looking to have a wonderful time in the Lord. Also, our watch night services will take place on, uh, on uh, December the 31st. That's on a Sunday this year. So we'll come uh, for morning worship. Uh, we're going to have a modified worship service here uh, during that morning. We'll come back that evening uh, at 10 o'clock. Our, our, our watch night services will be at 10 o'clock uh, this year. But this year we want to do something a little different. We, 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 we want to try to have a New Year's breakfast 
downstairs. Amen. Somebody say amen. Uh, after we worship the Lord upstairs, we want to we want to fellowship downstairs. And uh, now we want to we need to know how many to prepare for. So if you're interested in staying uh, in the up uh, starting tomorrow through next week, uh, we'll have a sign up sheet in the in the welcome center because we want to make sure we have enough for everybody. Um, and we just want to have a holiday fellowship meal to bring in the new year. Amen. Uh, the Bible says, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. So after we bring in the new year, uh, grand style in the sanctuary, we want to go down in the fellowship hall and just meet, greet, fellowship, and just have a wonderful time uh, in fellowship. I also want to thank uh, Shiloh for a wonderful, wonderful dinner on yesterday. Uh, it was it was tremendous and I want to thank God for our culinary art staff and all those who serve let's give God praise for them amen um, so many times during the holidays we forget about Christmas a lot of times we give dinner for Thanksgiving uh, but we forget about those who don't have uh, a meal for Christmas and I want to thank all those who helped to bring that to pass. Uh, I don't want to call names, but if you were a part of that, I'm going to ask that you would stand because I don't know everybody. I know some of them, but I don't want to miss anybody. Uh, so if you're, if you're here today and you are a part of that, please stand. Uh, culinary Arts, uh, I think Sister S Dr. Salida Day was a part of it. Uh, Deacon Williams, a part of it. Uh, some of them may be downstairs. Amen. Let's give God praise. Thank you so much, our servers. Um, and thank God for the community that came uh, to share with us. Uh, the ushers are passing out. We wanted to make sure, uh, Lady Michelle and I wanted to make sure that everybody got something from us this year. And so the ushers are passing out bookmarks. Uh, and they are personalized bookmarks. Uh, uh, and this is just our way of saying to you, Shiloh, that we love you. We thank God for you. And we thank God for your support and your patronage here at, at, at Shiloh. Now, now, she makes me look a whole lot better than what I look. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, and so, on behalf of Lady Michelle and I, this is just something uh, to put uh, 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 in your Bibles, uh, put it on your mantle, and we just want you to know 2017. Uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and may God bless you, Shiloh, to see many, many more uh, years to come. Let's just celebrate at this time. Thank you so much. Amen. Now, at this time, we're going to prepare our hearts for our uh, music ministry to come uh, and bless us in song. And we're going to be preaching the second sermon of a three-part series, The X Factor. Uh, last, uh, the first Sunday, we talked about uh, your help is on the way. Uh, today, I want to talk about when God shows up. Amen. When God shows up. And so our choir is going to come and bless us in song, and then we'll come back with the word from the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, he's a show up kind of God. Amen. He'll show enough, show up.
God, there is none like you. You are sovereign. You are king. You are Elohim, El Shaddai, the God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. You're the Alpha and the Omega, and you are everything in between. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me today spirit of the living god fall afresh on your people today spirit of the living god fall afresh on us today and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight O lord our savior strength and redeemer it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, put those sanctified hands together and give the Lord a hand praise offering. Amen. You may be seated. If you have your Bibles today, turn with us to the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter number 7, and verse number 14. The book of Isaiah, the prophet, commonly known as the Eagle Eye Prophet, Amen. he looks down through the corridors of time and prophesies about the coming Savior, the King, the Emmanuel. Uh, in Isaiah chapter number 9, verse 6, he says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Uh, somebody ought to just be happy to know that he's a wonderful God. Not only is his name wonderful, but he's a counselor. 
Do I have anybody here? You can call on him in the midnight hour. He's the everlasting uh, father. He is the mighty God. He is the prince of peace. Here in this text, uh, Isaiah chapter number 7, verse 14, uh, if you stand uh, for the reading of God's word, one verse simply says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Uh, just a few moments, just want to talk about when God shows up. Amen. You may be seated when God shows up. Uh, thank you, ushers. This, this text today is, is poignant, it's powerful, it's persuasive, it's provocative. In that the prophet Isaiah writes to us about the oxymoronic nature of a divine God. That God does stuff that sometimes don't make sense. God allows us, uh, Jeff, many times to experience hardships in life that don't make sense. Uh, many of our struggles, many of us who are going through right now, truth be told, we're trying to make sense out of what we're facing. Uh, society is in shambles, don't make sense. Communities are ravaged. Don't make sense. Uh, laws are being passed without consideration for the least, the lost, and the left out. Don't make sense. People are losing their jobs after many years of working for corporations only to get a pink slip and a thank you as they walk out the door. Don't make sense. Uh, mothers are grieving over their children. Don't make sense. Fathers are grieving over their families. Don't make sense. Wars and rumors of wars really doesn't make sense. Uh, earthquakes in strange places. Wildfires out in California. It seems like nature itself is off kilt. It doesn't make sense. How do you handle the vicissitudes of life when what you're going through don't make sense and then God on top of that is silent. That you're trying to make sense out of things that don't make sense and when you go to God, God further complicates the situation by adding silence in the midst of your suffering. How do you handle the silence of God? You cry all night long and God is silent. Uh, you're fasting and you're praying and yet God is silent. Uh, you're struggling, God is silent. Uh, you're seeking, God is silent. Uh, you, you, you're trying to hold on to your faith, God is silent. You come to church, and sometimes church just seems like a routine a rendezvous on a Sunday morning. God is silent. You try to praise him, but praise sometimes feels empty. God is silent. Your worship in the woundedness of your spirit, God is silent. You have more month than you have money, God is silent. Doors that used to be open seem to be closed now, God is silent. Friends you used to be able to depend on are no longer there, God is silent. Seems as if what can go wrong will go go wrong does go wrong don't know why it's going wrong but God is silent how do you handle it when heaven is silent to your suffering this 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 pericope this this text this 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 this, this argument of, of, of the prophet Isaiah uh, uh, shows us that that even in the midst of uncertainty God has a date on his calendar that he will show up. 
that that you can trust and believe that if God said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. If God said I'll be a way maker, he's going to be a way maker. If God said I'll open doors that no man can close, trust God, he'll do just what he said. If he said I'll be a bridge over troubled waters, trust him, he will do what he said. If he said I'll be a lawyer in the courtroom, trust him, he'll do what he said. If he said I'll be a doctor in your sick room, trust him, he'll do what he said. Is there anybody here that can look back over your life and testify that God did show up and he did just what he said? We, we are in the Advent season and the Advent simply is that season on the Christian calendar that precedes Christmas tide and and what the advent season tells us is that we have a God that is marching out of eternity into time and he's going to show up in Bethlehem the, the advent lets us know that that everything that the prophets prophesied about, everything that they talked about, everything that they saw, everything that they spoke, the Advent says that, that God may not come when you want him, but he's an on-time God. The Advent says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The Advent says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. The Advent says that if you hold on to God's unchanging hand, he will show up in your showdown. The Advent Advent says that we're marching towards Zion, the beautiful city of God. The Advent says, I got trouble in my way, got to try sometime, lie awake at night, but that's all right, for Jesus will fix it after a while. And that's what the Advent tells us, that, that trouble don't last always. I wish I had a praying church in Shiloh that could testify that when I look back over my life, I'm here today because God showed up and let me know trouble don't last always. There are some people here that can testify you got bad reports from the doctor, but you're still here because trouble don't last always. There are some people that can testify I didn't know how I was going to make it, but I'm here today because trouble don't last always I got somebody that can testify I felt like giving up I felt like throwing in the towel I felt like going back but the reason why I'm standing here today is because trouble don't last always it is the advent that we serve a God that is marching toward us that the enemy aggravates you only for a season that the aggravation of your suffering is not permanent it's temporary that 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 watch this before god ever allowed the enemy to attack you God already had the date on the calendar to be the answer that you needed long before you knew the answer that you needed. That, that he said long before you got in the struggle. He said before you walked in the water. He said before you went through the fire. He said before you get there, I'll be with you. He said before you got through the fire, that when you walk through the fire, the fire won't burn you. He said before you went through the water, that when you go through the waters, the waters will not overshadow you. And here's the shouting point. Because when I look back over what I came out of, I have no remnant that I was ever there in the first place. I don't look like what I've been through. You ought to give your neighbor a high five right about there and tell him if you really knew my story, you really wouldn't understand my praise because I don't look like what I've been through. I don't even smell like what I've been through. When you look at me, there is no remnant of my wretchedness. When, when you look at me, you're seeing the finished product, but you don't know the process. Give your neighbor a high five and tell him, thank God for the process. Thank you. Thank God for the process. And, and so Isaiah 
prophesies on this text. He talks about war. He, in, in the opening, opening argument of the text, chapter number 7, verse 1, he says, It came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the, the son of Isaiah, king of Judah, that risen the king of Syria and Pekiah, the, the son of Ramalia, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail. Watch this. That, no, no, notice, no, notice what was being attacked. Judah and Israel. Don't, don't miss this because, because, because Judah means praise and Israel means favored with God. Notice in the text what happens in the text before God shows up in the text. The textual analysis says that something has to happen for God to show up in the happenings. And when God shows up in the happenings, he shows up in the happenings because he allowed what to happen to happen. You, you, you missed it. You missed it. You missed it. That, that everything that's happened, God allowed it to happen because he wants to show up in the happenings of your life. That if you had no happenings, there would be no happens for him to show up. Y'all don't want to talk back to me. That God does not just happen to show up. He allowed the happenings to happen. So that when he shows up, he turns your happenings into happiness. You, you missed it. You missed it. Nick, Nick, look at the text. The text says that Judah and Israel was under attack. The devil always wants your praise and your favor. Judah was under attack. Judah means praise. Israel was under attack. Israel means favored or prince with God. Notice the text says that they came up against Israel and they came up against Judah, but they could not overtake it. The devil may try you, but he can't triumph over you. Y'all missed a shout moment. The devil may tempt you, but he can't test you. The devil, he, 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 he may attack you, but he cannot assault you. Why? Because the text says, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Is there anybody that can testify that I thank God I got a God that's in me right now? The devil, Sister Beverly attacks Israel, favor, and and. And, and Nate, he attacks praise. No, notice what the devil is after in your life. Praisers, uh, the, the more you praise, the more problems you're going to have. Y'all don't want to talk back to me because the devil wants to silence your praise. But here's the key. The more problems he gives you, let your praise get higher. Y'all don't want to talk back to me. The more problems I have, I'm going to bless his name at all times. And so regardless of my problems, I got a God that I can praise in the midst of my problems. Why? Because my God will show up. He, he, he's a show up kind of God. The text says here that Israel and, and Judah was under attack. You got to understand what the enemy is after in your life. He, now, 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 let me help you. Praise is not always uh, a running, dancing, and shouting. Praise is not always an emotional thing. Some people praise God and you don't even realize they're praising God. Some people praise him with tears running down their eyes. Some people praise him because they, 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 their body is, 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 is riddled with pain. And they're saying, if I couldn't say a word, I'll just. Some people give him a, a wave offering. Some, some people just clap their hands. But watch this. The greatest praise you can give God is the life that you live. Y'all don't want to talk back to me. The text says that, that praise and, and Israel was under attack. And the text says there in verse number one that they came against Israel. They came against Jerusalem. They came against Judah. They came against praise. They came against favor. But the text says they could not 
prevail against it. When your praise is under attack, understand the reason why the devil cannot defeat you is because praise is a weapon. Praise is not only what you do, praise is who you are. And when you go through the battles of life, the reason why the devil can't have you is because your praise will turn the atmosphere. Your praise will turn the enemy. Your praise will turn deliverance. Your praise. The text says that they showed up before God showed up. God doesn't show up in the text. But the enemy showed up. Watch this. Because what the enemy didn't know was that God was a silent observer. You, you, you missed it. Just because he's silent don't mean he doesn't see. The enemy shows up in the text and God is a silent observer. How do you handle when God is on the sideline watching you suffer and refuses to say a word? God is in the text, but he's silent. God is, a, God is omnipotent. He's omnipresent. That he knows all. He sees all. He's everywhere at the same time. And even though he's not seen in the text, he's always in the text because he's omnipotent. And so the text says that the enemy shows up and attacks Jerusalem, attacks Israel, attacks Judah. And the text says that they could not prevail against it. Verse 2 says, it was told the house of David, saying Syria is aligned with Ephraim. And his heart was moved and the heart of the people as the trees of the wood are removed in the wind. How do you handle it when you get bad news? Not only is the enemy attacking your praise, not only... Is the enemy attacking your favor, but now he's attacking your person. When your body is under attack, when your purpose is under attack, when, when your praise is under attack, when your promotion is under attack, when your prosperity is under attack. Look at the text because the text says that, that they tell the house of David, and watch this, then said the Lord unto Isaiah. You've got to let God allow things to happen until there becomes a then moment. God does not do anything in the text, Jeff, until the text comes to what I like to call a then moment. Because a then moment in the text is a moment when the emphasis is no longer on you. But now it's on him. You've done all you can do in the first verse. You've done all you can do in the second verse. And when you've done all that you could do, and when you've said all that you can say, when you've prayed all you can pray, when you've praised as much as you can praise, it is then that God shows up. And notice what God does. He shows up not in a work, but he shows up in a word. Tells Isaiah to give them a word. That's why the word of God is so important. Because God delivers you in connection with your faith according to what he said. Faith in the word. Look at the text. Then said the Lord to Isaiah, go now and meet Ahaz. And, and, and Shir Jezeb at the end of the conduit of the upper pool, the highway of the fullest field, and say unto them, take heed and be quiet, fear not, neither be faint-hearted, for the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of Risen and Syria, and the son of Ramiah. Watch this. He says, listen, even though your enemies are under attack, even though your faith 
is under attack, even though your worship is under attack, even though your praise is under attack, even though your person is under attack, he says, don't fear, shut your mouth, be quiet, and let God fight your battles. Ah, oh, good God Almighty. In the Psalms, the Bible says, be still and know I am God. We, we, we quote that, we quote that, but do we really understand what that text is teaching us? The text says, God says, be still and know I am God. Here he says, take heed, be quiet, fear not, neither be faint-hearted for the two tails of these smoking firebrands. Watch this, because your fear is connected to what you say. It's in the text. He says, look at the text. He says, take heed and be quiet. Why? Because the wrong words set the wrong atmosphere. And many times we talk ourselves out of victory based on what comes out of our mouth. Oh, y'all don't want to talk back to me today, but is there anybody here can testify that when I get weary, I got somebody I can call on that'll speak life into my spirit. That when I don't know what to say, I got somebody on the inside that makes an assertion that when I don't have the words, he goes to God on my behalf. Many times we prolong our sufferings. Based on what comes out of our mouths, he says, be quiet. Put a zip on it. Hold your peace. Hold your peace. Good God Almighty. Uh, uh, Shirley Caesar had a song back in the day, said, hold my mule. Shouting John, hold my mule. Y'all know the story, Shouting John joined this Sedity church, not Shiloh. We're we not Sedity, we, 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 we celebratory, but... Shout John was a praiser, and he, he, he joined this real quiet church, you know. They, 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 they praised the Lord. You know, there was a kind of sedity church, you know. They, very, very, very upscale church, and Shouting John, every time the choir sing, he's all over the church. Shouting John, every time the preacher preach, he's all over the church, and, and finally they had a meeting on Shouting John and said, listen, if you don't stop that noise in this church, we're going to put you out. Shouting John said, I tell you what. Come on outside. Y'all don't want to talk back to me. Shouting John said, you see that mule over there? He said, you see all that land out there? God gave me that land. You see, you see, you see my age? I'm, I'm 90 years old and I can get around just as good as I was at 45. A uh, God did that. He said, if I can't shout in your church, hold my mule. I'll shout right now. And that's how you got to be to the devil. I'll shout in the grocery store. I'll shout at the gas station. I'll shout at home. I'll shout on the block. If I can't shout in church, hold my mule. I'll shout right now. Is there anybody here that got a reason to shout because God been good to you? Give your neighbor a high five and say, hold my mule, hold my mule. I feel a shout coming on when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. I got to give him glory in the house. Got to get out of here. I don't want you to hold you too long. He says, be quiet. Look at your neighbor and say, put a zip on it. Close your mouth. He said, watch this. Because, 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 because your fear is connected what comes out of your mouth. He says, be quiet. I asked you earlier, do you, the, the, the scripture that says, be still and know I'm God. What, 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 that, what that text is, it's really a military statement. God, God is giving military commands. And, and the imagery, the imagery, Christine, is that the, the, the soldiers are, are, are marching into battle. And they get a command to be still. And they come to a complete halt. They stop marching with their weapons in their hand. Then God says, not only do I want you to be still, but I want you to know. The no means, in addition to you standing still, you've got to drop your weapons. And let me fight your battles. Y'all don't want to talk back to me. 
Because many times we'll stand still, but we won't drop our weapons. And as long as you got your weapons in your hand, God won't fight your battles. But the moment you stand still, drop your weapons and trust in God. He'll show up on the battlefield and fight your battles and give you victory in the midst of what was supposed to be a defeat. So on the backdrop of this, that this prophecy about the advent, the Christ, comes on the horizon. God tells Isaiah to go and give him a word. Tell him, don't, 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 don't be faint of heart. Don't, don't, don't be troubled. I know, I know your enemies are all around you. I know your praise is under attack. I know your person is under attack. I know your purpose is under attack. I, I know your prosperity. I, I know everything about you is under attack. But he says, listen, don't, don't talk about it. Don't, 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 don't get on the telephone. Don't text don't don't Instagram, don't Facebook, amen. Don't don't tweet about it. Be quiet, amen. Go to your secret closet, close up with God, and have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. He'll hear your faintest cry. He'll answer by and by. Feel a little prayer will turn in. Know a little fire will burn in. Have a little talk with Jesus. He'll make it all right. Is there anybody here? No, he'll make it all right. If God made it all right in your life, give him a high five and tell him he made it all right for me. So when God shows up, this, this, this text, pertinent, powerful, persuasive, when God shows up, number one, God, God shows up, he, he protects his divinity. He is undeniable. When God shows up in the text, he, he protects his divinity, that, that God allows things to happen in our lives, James, so that his divinity can be undeniable, that, that we can't deny the divinity, the deity of God, that, that God lets the bottom fall out. So that when we fall from the bottom, we discover he was the rock at the bottom of the bottom. Y'all don't want to talk back to me. He, he allows all H-E double hockey sticks to break loose in our lives so that when we get to a point of not understanding, he allows things to happen that we cannot deny who he is. The text says, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Notice the text says it is the Lord that gives you the sign. When God shows up, he protects his divinity. Can the church say divinity? The divinity simply means that God is divine. He is a divine God. And because he is a divine God, he works in ways that don't make sense to us. He works outside of the scope of reason. He, he works outside the scope of rationale. He, he works outside of the scope of reality. That God works outside of time, then shows up in time and does in time what he'd already done outside of time. That God does the work outside of time, comes in time, works what he did outside of time, does it in time, does it on time, steps back outside of time without ever leaving outside of time and say, how you like me now? Wish I had a witness in this house. He is a show up kind of God. Let me help you. He, he gave you your healing outside of time. He allowed you to get sick in time, but your healing was already done outside of time. He comes from outside of time with your healing, comes in time with the healing he gave you outside of time, heals your body in time, and even though he's in time, he never stopped being outside of time, steps back outside of time and say, how you like me now? He's that kind of God. He does what is undeniable, meaning that nobody can get the glory but him. Nobody can get the honor 
but him. Nobody can get the recognition but him. Is there anybody here can testify that God did some stuff in my life that the doctors didn't get glory for? The husband didn't get glory for. The wife didn't get glory for. It was because of the hand of God. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. Is there anybody here today came to give God glory because he's done true and mighty things in your life therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign his, it's, 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 it's his divinity this, this word this word this word is sign in the Hebrew is the word oath it's, it's, it's pronounced O-W-T-H but it's, it's said oath he says therefore the Lord will give you an oath it's where we get our English word oath from that, that God watch this God is so bad that he swears by himself, of himself, to himself, without ever denying himself. He says, the Lord himself shall give you an oath. It is like a man or a woman going to court and they ask you to raise your right hand. Do, do you swear? Do you oath? Do you affirm to tell the whole truth? The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. Well, well, God says, since I'm God, there's nobody for me to hold my hand up to. There's, no, there's nobody higher than me. So I swear by my own self. Y'all don't want to talk back to me. That the only truth is the way, the truth, and the life. And since I'm God and Christ is truth, I swear my Godhead by his truth. If you want to know how bad I am, look at Jesus. What, what you mean? He died. Buried resurrected with all power in his hands that's the testimony of God and that if God did it for Jesus he'll do it for you y'all don't want to talk back to me he he protects his divinity he, he says the Lord will give you an oath that, that 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 word oath in the Hebrew means a distinguishing mark it means a standard of proof God says my standard of proof is my son, Jesus Christ. My, my distinguishing mark in history is my son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is so bad that he, he divides time into A.D. and B.C. Calvary was such an awesome feat that, that what happened before Calvary is called B.C. What happens after Calvary is called A.D., but the reason why time is split is because he showed up. Trying to help you. That, that when God shows up, things are no longer the same. When God shows up, situations are no longer the same. When God shows up, circumstances are no longer the same. So when God shows up, number one, he, he, he protects his divinity, Anna, he he protects his divinity. He does that which is undeniable. But not only when God shows up, he, he protects his divinity. He, he preserves his humanity. In addition to doing the undeniable, he does the unbelievable. He, 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 he protects his divinity without compromising his humanity. It is what we call in, in, in theological terms, the hypostatic union that 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 Jesus Christ is a hundred percent God and a hundred percent man he is God who came down in human form and became a man without stopping being God he's a hundred percent God and a hundred percent man he is the God man he is the one that enclose the human profession and expression of a divine God. Look at the text. 
text says he preserves his humanity. Look at the text. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. There's the oxymoron in the text because, because how can a virgin conceive and yet be a virgin? That, that, that's, that's, that's oxymoronic because if a virgin is going to be with child, she's no longer a virgin. Because through the process of natural order, once she conceives, it suggests that there was some activity that compromised her virginity. But the text says that a virgin shall conceive, bear a child, and not be, or rather not cease to be, who and what she is, a virgin. That is the, the, the oxymoronic nature of God, that God does things that don't make sense. And so he preserves his humanity because in Genesis chapter number four, uh, God says, uh, chapter number three, God says to, to Eve, he says, I'm going to put enmity between you and, uh, rather he says to, to the snake, to the serpent, he says, I'm going to put enmity between you, the serpent, and the woman, between thy seed, the serpent, and her seed, the woman. The, 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 the argument in the text is that women don't have seed. The seed comes from the man. But God says, I'm going to put strife between the enemy's seed and not the man's seed, but the woman's seed. Why? Because Adam has just sinned and now the seed of mankind has been compromised. That everything that comes through Adam is tainted by sin. That, that all of Adam's offspring is contained contaminated by sin. Everybody born after Adam is sinful. That's why we sin without being taught. You don't have to teach somebody how to lie. It's in them. You don't have to tell. Oh, y'all got quiet all of a sudden. You, you, you don't have to teach a, a baby how to, to lie. See, a, a baby will lie to you all the time. How do you know? Baby crying, baby crying, nothing wrong with the baby. Baby crying, 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 cry, 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 cry all night, cry. And here you are, you get out your bed, you stop doing what you're doing, and you run to that child. Now that child knows that they got you. <laughs> Because there's nothing wrong with the child. The child is lying without lying. You, you didn't teach that child that. That was in that child. And when you run to that child, that child now knows I got mama. Because anytime I cry, mama is going to come. Daddy is going to come and give me what I want. Sometimes you got to let the baby cry to learn the lesson that you are the child and I am the parent. Y'all don't want to talk back to me. And that's why God doesn't always come when we cry because he's trying to get us to understand I don't move on your cry. You got to trust me enough to move when I know it's time to move. He says here that a virgin shall conceive. God says, I'm going to put strife between the enemy, the devil, and not the man. Adam now has sinned. His bloodline is contaminated. His seed is sinful. Now everything that comes to Adam by way of Eve is sinful. Now everybody born through the Adamic bloodline is sinful but yet God says I've got to come as a man. I've got to show up and redeem man as a man. How can I show up as a man uh, and redeem man without compromising the manhood order? God says I'm going to give the seed to the woman. 
Because the woman was not disobedient, she was deceived. Y'all don't want to talk back to me. Adam was disobedient, but the woman was deceived. And so God says, I'm going to give the woman not her seed, but I'm going to give the woman my seed. And what belongs to me now belongs to her. Y'all don't want to talk back to me. And so what God does, he, he impregnates himself in Mary. He overshadows Mary with himself and deposits himself in her without stepping outside of time. He comes outside of time, shows up in Bethlehem, impregnates himself in the womb of Mary, and after nine months, he's now a baby boy, but he's still God in human form. So a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Here it is, that God can do the impossible and the improbable. Uh, so here in this text, I got to get out of here before you accuse me of holding you too long. Here, the Bible says that Gabriel shows up in the book of Luke and Mary is there. He says, blessed thou woman of favor, you have favor with God. He tells her how this is going to happen, that the Holy Ghost shall overshadow you and that thing that is in you shall be called the Son of God. So here we have the divine God. He does that which protects his divinity, but he also preserves his humanity. This, this word, this word conceive in the Hebrew is the word haras, harath. What it means is to give birth, to be with child, a virgin who had never been with a man is now going to have a child. A virgin, a virgin, Mary, Mary, the one that had never been touched by a man. She is now pregnant. She's giving birth to the Christ child. And watch this. She goes to Elizabeth because in times like this, every woman needs a woman to understand what she's going through. And so, and so, Joseph is struggling, even though the angel tells Joseph that this is of God. Joseph is struggling, and for three months, Mary goes to the house of Elizabeth, who just herself now has a child on the way, John the Baptist. And so, Mary hides out with Elizabeth for three months, and for three months, Elizabeth teaches Mary how to deal with the reproach of having a child out of wedlock. Let me stop right there because you do realize Jesus was born out of wedlock. Got quiet here. Jesus was born out of wedlock because Mary and Joseph were not married. They were espoused. Why does Jesus come to us born out of wedlock? Because he saw the church of today. He saw how we've ostracized young ladies who've had babies out of wedlock. He saw how we treat them. We took them to the curb. We ostracized them. And Jesus says, I'm going to come as an illegitimate bastard child so I can identify with those who've been tossed out of society. I'm glad I served of Jesus who's able to relate to what we go through that he does what we do feel what we feel and goes through with the understanding that if God brought him out God will bring us out look at your neighbors that he will show up gotta get out of here so he preserves his humanity finally not only does he protect his divinity not only does he preserve his humanity but when God shows up he promotes prophecy. He does that which is unshakable. The Bible says, the final piece of the verse, uh, Isabel, that his name shall be called Emmanuel. And that means God is with us. That, that's shouting news right there. The reason why I know 
that God will show up is because he was with me all the while. His showing up is simply a manifestation of what he already did. He didn't just show up when I saw him. He showed up even as a silent advisor, a silent observer of my suffering. And the Bible says here that his name shall be called Emmanuel. This name goes down in the archives of history as a name that reminds us that no matter how hard things get, we have a God that will never leave or forsake us. That, that no matter what the doctors might say, we have a God that says, with my stripes, you are healed. We have a God that no matter what the justice say, he'll be a lawyer in the courtroom. Do I have a witness here this morning? Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, he will show up. Can I get a witness here? Anybody know he's all right? If you know he's all right, won't you put your hands together and give him a praise? He is the great I am. I feel like preaching this morning. He is the stone rolled out of a mountain. He is the, the midnight rider. He is the one that said from everlasting to everlasting, I'm still God. He is the great I am. He is Mary's baby. He is Joseph's son. He is Shiloh's redeemer. He's Larry's savior. He's somebody's doctor. But whatever he is to you, you ought to stand and be a witness and let the devil know that the God that you serve is a show up kind of God. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor, be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Anybody here today, can you lift your hands and be a witness and tell your neighbor, my God did show up. He showed up at the Red Sea. He showed up on David's battlefield. He showed up for Samson. He showed up for Esther. He showed up for Ruth. He showed up for Elijah. He showed up for Daniel. He showed up for Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro. He showed up for the prophets. He showed up for Isaiah. He showed up for Jeremiah. He showed up for Moses. He showed up for Joshua. He showed up for David. He showed up for Samuel. He showed up for Abigail. He showed up for Jephaniah. He showed up for Haggai. He showed up for Zechariah. He showed up for Malachi. And one day he showed up in Bethlehem. Do I have a witness? 
He showed up in a manger. Showed up with a star. Showed up wrapped in swaddling clothes. Anybody know he's all right? Shout yeah. He showed up in Nazareth. He showed up in Capernaum. He showed up healing the sick. He showed up raising the dead. He showed up feeding the hungry. He showed up clothing the naked. But one day he showed up on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross it was the emblem of suffering and shame i thank god that he showed up on the cross but he showed out on sunday it was at the cross at the cross when I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away it was there at the cross it was there at the cross it was there at the cross where I first saw the light and now I got joy ain't he all right shout it yeah. shout it yeah. 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 he shows up he shows up on time anybody here can you wave your hand be a witness that he showed up in your life. I was sinking deep in sin. Far, 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 far from the weekend hand. But I thank God his love lifted me when nothing else could help. Jesus, hey. Hey, 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 yeah. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Have you tried him? Do you know him? Won't he do it? Do I have a witness that can testify after all? I've been through, I still got joy, hey, joy unspeakable, joy full of glory, joy, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it. Any all right? So yeah, so yeah, so yeah. Hey, 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 hey yeah. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done, y'all. Some of y'all sitting on me. But I'm done. Some of y'all sitting on me. But I'm done. But if you miss me from singing down here and you can't find it nowhere, go on up to pride and glory. I'll be somewhere around the throne where the wicked will see some trouble and the weary will be at rest the battle shall be fought and the victory shall be won give them glory in the house 
Is there anybody here that got a praise in your mouth? Give them glory in the house. I'll bless the Lord at all and his praise and his praise and his praise. Hey, hey, hey. When God shows up, he protects his divinity. He preserves his humanity. He promotes his prophecy. And God shows up to fulfill what he promised. He shows up to validate that I'll do what I said I'll do. He shows up on the scene of what he allows to happen in our lives so that he can convert happenings into happiness. 
And I don't know where you are in your faith walk, but there's somebody here in the valley. You're in the valley of indecision. You're in the valley of distress. The valley of discouragement. The valley of loneliness. It seems like God has forgotten about you. You see everybody else shouting, but you're still in your silent suffering. How do you celebrate when somebody else comes out and you're still in? The text says, when your praise is under attack, when your favor is under attack, when your person is under attack, the text says, it will not be able to prevail. Why? Your praise is a weapon. If the devil can silence your praise, he got the victory. And praise is not based on how I feel. Praise is based upon the knowledge that I know that beyond a shadow of a doubt that he may not do it today, he may not do it tomorrow, he may not do it this month, he may not do it this year, but I'm going to praise him until he does it. I'm going to praise him while I'm waiting on the house. I'm going to praise him while I'm waiting on the car. And I'm going to praise him like I already got him. Don't, don't wait for God to give you what you're asking for to pray. Praise him before you get it like you already got it. And he'll give it to you. Why? He will show up. We have one of our sisters who celebrated a birthday last week. I think she's 88 years young today. Amen. Wave your hand. I think she's here in the back. There she is. 88 years. Still in church. Still praising God. Still trusting God. Dr. Daughtry said last week, I ain't tired yet. That's what he said. Elder Hart, I mean Elder Cox, we see him, even though he's on a, on a cane, he'll put that cane to the side and get his dance on and go back to the cane. He's 86 years young, praising God. Deacon Worthy, 89 years young, still praising God. I ain't tired yet. Deacon Jane, I'm not calling her age. <laughs> Still on the battlefield. Praising God. Work around here, I mean, better than people have. I get tired watching her work. But on the battlefield. Sister Karen Fuchs and others. That my age don't stop my assignment. I'm going to worship him. I'm going to work until I can't work no more. Why? Because I'm going to do the works of him that sent me while it's day. Because the night's going to come when no man can work. If you're here today, threefold altar call. Number one, if you don't have Christ in your life, you can come. You can come. Maybe you're looking for a church home. You can come. I don't believe in homeless Christians. Every Christian ought to have a church home. Every believer ought to have a church home that you can call home. Not a perfect church. If there's no church perfect, because guess what? If it was perfect, once you join it, it's no longer perfect. Bless his name. Amen. I think Shiloh was perfect until I got here, right? Once I came to Shiloh, I know I'm imperfect. And so anything that I'm a part of cannot be perfect. But watch this. God is perfecting his imperfect church. We're being perfected through the work of the Holy Spirit. So if you're here today and you don't have a church home, you need to be covered. You need to be connected. And Shiloh is good ground. Shiloh is great soil. Shiloh is a word church, a worshiping church, a working church, a worthwhile church. Are you here? Backslider, I want to I wanna be renewed in my, fa my faith walk. I, I, I want to be restored. I want to be renewed. I, I want God to show up in my life. Maybe you need prayer. The altar is open for you.
during this Advent season, during this Advent season, the time of his arrival, maybe you're in prayer. Maybe you're wanting God to, to, to do something in your life and you need prayer. The altar is open. And listen, listen, if you need prayer, don't wait for somebody to move. You got to want prayer for yourself. And so if the altar is open and you know you need prayer, don't, don't, don't. Many times we miss our blessing waiting on other people. Be, be the first one. Because while you're waiting on somebody else, somebody else waiting on you. And everybody need prayer. And so if you need prayer, come on. Amen. I want to I wanna connect with you. I want to pray with you. Amen. It's still coming. It's still coming. Prayer don't mean that I've sinned. Prayer doesn't mean that I'm backslided. Prayer just needs, I, I need strength. I, I need strength. I'm, I'm going through. I need strength. It, it don't mean that you backslid. It don't mean that you're out of fellowship. It simply means I need strength. I need strength. And we all need prayer. Amen. God bless you. 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 To those who came today for prayer, I want, I want you to get in your spirit that God will show up. Say that with me. God will show up. God will show up. And how do you know? Because you're still standing. The evidence that God showed up is that you're still here. Because if, if, if God wasn't on your side, what you went through would have taken you out because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Anytime we survive what was meant to destroy us, it shows that God showed up. Anytime what was meant to destroy you didn't work, it meant that God showed up. And I want you to be encouraged that God is not by accident that you're here today. Out of all the Sundays that you came to Shiloh to hear a word, you come here when the preacher is going to talk about God showing up. Why? Because I guarantee you, everybody here, you need something for God to show up. But guess what? When a woman is expecting a child, the conception occurs before the birth. The conception is that which cannot be seen. But through the process of time, the manifestation of what has been conceived, the woman begins to show that she's carrying a child. And eventually what was given to her is come out through birth. Just because you don't see God don't mean he's not there. Just because you don't see a woman pregnant don't mean she's not pregnant. Because the conception takes place before the actualization. And that's how God does. He gets inside of what we're going through. He gets inside of our struggle. He gets inside of our turmoil. He gets inside of the situation. And then he begins to work that thing out so that when it comes forth, it has purpose. It has value. The Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. God has placed treasure in everybody at this altar. If there's something in you that God wants out he wants to use you for his glory. There's something that God has given you. There's a gift that God has given you. There's an assignment that God has given you. And he's showing up. He's showing up because he wants to use you to show out. And so I'm going to pray. As you're standing at this altar, some of you are crying and some of you tear stained. I want you to know that trouble don't last always, sis. This is going to pass. It's going to pass. It's all right. It's okay to cry because turn your, seer, turn your tears of sorrow into tears of joy. Change the attitude about your tears. Just know he showed up. And so now I'm crying not from sorrow, but I'm crying because I'm celebrating the fact that God did it for me. And if he did it for me, he's going to do it for somebody else. He's going to do it for somebody else. He's going to do it. He's doing it right now at this altar. Father, I, I come in covenant 
agreement with my brothers and sisters at this altar. We touch, we agree, we touch, we agree, we touch, we agree, we touch, we agree. You said where two or three are gathered together in your name, touching and agreeing. You're in the midst. And because you're in the midst, every situation at this altar, we come in covenant agree with, with your word that is turning around right now. The sorrow is turning around. The pain is turning around. That you're showing up in the suffering and you're showing up in the season of silence. And even as you're showing up, God, you are showing out in their lives. Thank you, God. We pray, oh God, for, for the hurt, the inner hurt that many people don't even see. The tears that many people don't even see us crying. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, thank you for being a comfort. Thank you for being a companion. Thank you for being consistent. And Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I pray that they will know that they are not alone, they are not walking alone, they are not praying alone, they are not praising alone, but they are with you and you are with them. And right now, oh God, we decree and declare, right now we decree and declare that it is done, that you are on the scene, you are turning it around right now. The help is on the way, the help has arrived, you are on the scene, you are Emmanuel, you are the God that is with us and because you are with us no weapon formed against us shall prosper that you're doing it now God you're turning it around now God you're healing our bodies you're bringing us out you're restoring us you're reviving us you're renewing us thank you God for celebration thank you for salvation thank you for redemption right now in the name of Jesus as we touch and agree at this altar, we pray right now that we seal these prayers with your presence and that as they leave this altar, they will go in the assurance of knowing that what the enemy tried to do didn't work because you are a sovereign God who works through the silent seasons of our sufferings. And we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before you leave, I want to I wanna make contact. I want to make contact with you. I want to make contact. Don't, 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 don't leave. I want to make contact. Let's give God praise for the ministry of prayer. Thank you for your patience, Shiloh. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver, so I need everybody to smile. Everybody to smile. Amen. Everybody to smile. Amen. I want to, the best smile, the best smile, the best. Amen. Why am I smiling? Because God showed up. Amen. That's, that's a reason to smile, that God showed up in my situation. And so as we prepare to bless God in giving, and we bring our, clerk, our services to a close upstairs. We're asking parents, when you go downstairs, make sure you sign your children out. There's protocols, uh, so please see the youth staff downstairs. So at this time, we're going to ask uh, our ushers to prepare to lead us in the ministry of giving. Uh, Deacon, uh, Deacon John. We got Deacon John and Shouting John. So we got Deacon John today. Amen. He's going to lead us in our giving. Amen, amen, amen. 
So we all stand. They always said, if you want jobs and better jobs, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will be given to you. And if you're obedient to God, he'll pour out blessings from heaven that you can't even hold. So this is our, our offering is about being obedient to God. So if you ever give your 10%, you always have 90%. The bill's paid off in the Lord. So we're in the hands of the ushers. God bless you in your giving. I may feel a little bit better, a little bit encouraged. Amen. So this week, remind yourself all throughout the week, because the devil's going to try you, remind yourself God will show up. Uh, we got one of our members, basketball player. He's the basketball. 
You went overseas. We prayed for you. Yeah, welcome back. Stand up, sis. She was playing professional basketball overseas, and so are you back for good? Or are you? Oh, okay. So you're the reason why all that cold weather came here. You was playing overseas in that cold climate, and you brought all that cold weather. We're going to put you in a box. We're sending you back now. I just met. Congratulations. Uh, we've been following you. Thank God for a successful run, and we pray that God will continue to give you uh, uh, avenues and accolades and all that you do. Welcome back home. Amen. Come on, let's give her a hand. God bless you. We'll meet you in the back. As we prepare for our dismissal, Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present yourself faultless before his presence and glory and exceedingly joy. To the only wise God, Savior in birth and his glory, majesty and dominion, and the power now and forevermore. And the people of God say amen. Let us depart and serve.